Hey, welcome back for our third video on system calls. In this one, our focus is on indirect system calls. This is different from the last video in that we're not going to make that system call directly from our application anymore. The issue with direct system calls is that when you make a syscall directly from your user mode application, EDRs and other protective software can see that syscall coming directly from your application instead of where it's normally supposed to come from in, in inside of NTDLL. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a slight modification to the code that we created in video two. And instead of calling our system call inside of our user mode application, we're instead going to jump to NTDLL right before the syscall instruction and let NTDLL be the caller of the syscall instruction. That way, when the stack gets unwound, it looks like the, the system call was legitimately made through NTDLL as a normal application might call it. For us to do this, what we wanna do is modify our code to find the address of the legitimate NTDLL function so in our case, in our practice, we'll, uh, we'll use NT create file. So we'll find the address of NT create file and then use an offset from that address to find the syscall instruction and then we'll execute that address. Let's take a look at the code now and see what we can put together. Okay, so I've created a new project in Visual Studio for uh, the indirect syscalls. And first thing we want to do is adjust the build settings and enable MASM. That way we can uh, run assembly. So after that, we can create our main.cpp and our syscalls.asm. And we're just going to take the code from the direct syscalls video and paste that in here. That way we save a lot of time because it's essentially the same thing with some minor adjustments. So here is the, uh, the repository for the direct system calls. We'll open up the main.cpp, view this in raw format, and just copy paste that over in our main. And then we can jump back over again and grab the the syscalls.asm code as well. Just copy paste that. And this gives us a solid starting point. So now what we want to do is find the area where we're loading into DLL right here. And we want to create a pointer to the legitimate uh, NT create file. So create a human pointer to NT create file. And we just want to use get proc address to get that the address of create file. So we'll cast this to a UNT pointer called get proc address. and we will get the address for NT create file. Then for the, so, so now what we wanna do is create a variable in global scope. So that's gonna be outside of main. You can put it anywhere outside of main. We're just gonna go to the top and we want this to be an external variable, so we'll use extern c. You can use uh, extern underscore c, however you want to do it. This is going to be a, a uint pointer to the nt create file syscall. And we'll just set that to null for now. And then we will come down here and um, we're going to set the nt create file syscall 
variable to the nt create file address plus an offset. So nt create file syscall is equal to the pointer to nt create file address plus 12. So the offset is 12 from create file address. So you write that as 0x12. So now we have the address to the syscall for create file address. Now we, we, what we want to do is adjust the assembly to use that address. So let's just change this comment to indirect syscall example. And we want to create a data section and pull in the, the variable that we created in the global scope earlier. So we'll set that to extern nt create file syscall. And then we want to remove the syscall and the return from our code. You could comment this out. You can just uh, put the put this above, however you want to do it. But we're going to do just remove it and put jump keyword pointer and our keyword pointer is our nt create file syscall. So you just put that in brackets and it will uh, pull the address from that variable and jump. So before we had syscall here and then we had a return but we're removing that and instead jumping to the legitimate one now. So that is it to convert this to indirect syscalls. So let's just set a breakpoint on our, our custom nt create file function and build this. And we have some errors. Looks like something with the nt create file syscall variable. So let's just first make sure that our variable is consistent. Our variable name is consistent across the board. So we'll just copy paste this into every spot. Make sure we get it all. Looks like it was correct. Just compile and rerun. Still have an issue. Oh, so we have to define the variable type in our assembly file. So if we switch back over to the assembly file, you, you do that by um, using a, a colon and then whatever the, the value is. So it's a keyword, hence the jump to keyword pointer. So there we go. Now it compiles correctly. So we hit our breakpoint on custom nt create file. Let's open up the disassembly window and follow along. So we're looking for this custom nt create file. So we'll just step through this until we hit our custom nt create file. And here you can see we're inside of our syscalls.asm file now, where we're setting up our syscall. Moving 55 into EAX, and then we're going to hit our jump to keyword pointer in T create file syscall. So after we make that jump, you can see this address space is a lot different. Everything looks much different. That's because now we're inside of NTDLL. You can see other syscalls surrounding the syscall. Uh, so we jump directly to this syscall, skipping over everything else because we've already set up the syscall. So running that, and then we can check the program. We can see file created. So let's check on the desktop, make sure that our file was actually created. And it was, but with the wrong name. So we can fix that. So we can find where we create the file name, change that to indirect syscall. OK, so now let's build this and take a look at it inside of x64 debug. So 
So I'll just drag and drop the executable into x64 debug. And then we're going to go to modules and I'm going to set some breakpoints on NT create file. So I'll set a breakpoint at the top of the syscall or at the, the top of the, the syscall for NT create file and then set another breakpoint on the actual syscall instruction. So that's two breakpoints. And what we'll see is the first time we're going to hit that top breakpoint where we're setting up the syscall, and that's for the win API file. Oop, let me delete these files first. And if we run this, now we're going to hit the syscall breakpoint, and this is also still for that win API file. So we'll run it one more time, and we're going to immediately hit the syscall breakpoint again. Instead of hitting the uh, so you can see the the win API file was created. So instead of hitting this setup for this syscall, uh, we jump straight to the syscall instruction, and that is because our code sent us there. So if we take a look at the stack, we can see we're in this this uh, NT create file uh, offset uh, for the syscall, and uh, instead of the syscall being called directly from our user mode application, which is awesome. This looks way more legit from a defense perspective or adversarial evasion perspective. So I hope that you liked what you've seen so far. If you do, please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Make sure you join the Discord down below. It's getting a little more active every day. And I will look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks for your time.